Hi guys, Hengist here, and a big welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, once more, we're on the front line, and this is a critical battle, uh, where we're in our Norway and Flames campaign. This is the Battle of Nyborg. Uh, the news? Well, uh, it's pretty disheartening uh, across the world. Effectively, the New York Post writes, Oslo falls to German sea air battles raging. Um, and, and today we're really looking at Narvik, the, the operations in the south have completed. And this is critical, the Germans are outnumbered. Uh, Narvik is under intense shell fire. Allies have been landing all the way around here from Tromso all along the coast. We've got Polish forces, uh, we've got French forces, we've got British forces and we've got the Norwegians themselves. Um, as this picture depicts, we have in fact the French Foreign Legion who are going to make an appearance in this battle today. And there's been a link up, they've combined, there have been a couple of actions up here, but they've outmaneuvered the Germans and pushed the Germans right back uh, to Narvik. So let's have a look at the sets and terrain and how we do this. Basically we get uh, intel from Sam who's the uh, campaign manager and umpire, uh, and basically he sends in a map. It's effectively up to, to me and the team to basically put the table together. We use things like Google Maps, even though they're modern imagery, uh, and we try and reflect that, as you can see in these pictures. We haven't added the final sprinkle to uh, these shots coming up, and conscious in this is obviously we have to use a lot of black and white material. But we do the best we can to try and simulate, uh, you know, uh, what Norway is really looking like and 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 as you can see here uh, we, we break up the ground as best we can we try and make it as realistic and give as much cover and lines of sight uh, as, as possible it makes the game so much more exciting than sort of open uh, tables one of our favorite tricks is teddy bear fur as you can see here thanks to Gibson he rips it uh, rips them apart and I just collect the pieces and reuse them once scattered they look great so let's now look at the Polish forces, what have they got? Well we've got an entire Polish company as the main force. Um, that comprises of four platoons, uh, rifle uh, MG platoons with VBs. Uh, they've also got uh, some machine guns, uh, two company mortars uh, and some scouts. So not a big force but potent, you know, the uh, reroll motivation is hatred. Uh, basically uh, in assault. The French forces on the other hand are comprised of confident uh, veteran uh, foreign legionary troops. They've got two platoons with a command team. They have firestorm units. If these are lost in a campaign, destroyed, they cannot be uh, brought back. So uh, the t they've got 475 mil guns and most importantly uh, they have three Hotchkiss tanks. Um, the Germans opposing them are, are outnumbered in this case and it is a critical battle and it's the Kriegsmarine. These are fearless uh, trained very much like the Poles but they've got quite large platoons. They've got two large platoons, some mortars, some scouts, uh, heavy machine guns and two 75mm uh, anti-tank guns but that's it. They haven't really got any assets uh, to take on the tanks and uh, the Allies are very uh, smug about this to, to say the least. It's about time the ball's on the other foot. So in rules and systems, again, we're using uh, Flames of War version uh, 2 and 3 that we've mixed uh, with our bolt-ons. So let's get into the briefing and the deployment. Uh, as this map depicts here, uh, the Germans are deployed basically on the hill with the French attacking across uh, the bridge and the Poles to the front. As you can see, the Poles have deployed uh, on a wide frontage uh, and uh, all the uh, the French are basically coming over the bridge. They've got their guns sighted on the hill uh, and it looks a very, very good position to dominate and pound that, uh, that small little series of buildings. Uh, the objectives have been placed 24 inches apart by uh, both sides uh, and they sort of uh, are, are along the, the hill itself. Um, ground conditions, they're pretty good as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of cover as I've said. So let's get straight into the action, and what a cracker it really is. Well, uh, we start the action straight away by uh, determining what the weather is. We haven't had bad conditions, but today, yeah, we got it. We got extreme conditions. Visibility is now limited to 24 inches. Uh, there's no air, uh, and the conditions are likely to worsen on a, on a dice roll. Uh, the French, they're geared up to go. The Legionnaires want to show their mettle. The Poles are keen to be at the enemy as well. 
uh, with their hatred and effectively the French prepared to launch over the bridge, uh, getting their guns deployed uh, and moving forward. Immediately the Germans respond, they have a signaler attached with four dice, they're ranging in quite uh, successfully. They needed to get fives on that bridge basically with the cover uh, and they keep getting it because of that additional dice. The French are moving forwards though uh, very vigorously and so are the Poles, taking advantage that there is a limited visibility uh, blanket for them. The tanks immediately launch an assault. It, it, it's incredulous. Uh, they go straight up the road and hit the, uh, I think there are three bases of a patrol group. But what the French hadn't seen whilst the mortars are landing by the bridge was that the two Geb guns were behind. Now the chances of them doing what they did next were incredible. And in fact, uh, with only anti-tank five against front armor three, but the French rolled two ones, two tanks, two precious tanks, destroyed immediately. And uh, basically the Allies' faces just dropped. The Germans basically then, looking at the situation, basically uh, unleash their first ambush, which is a, again a camp group with heavy machine guns, and start opening fire. But the Poles make incredible save, 28 hits across the board, and I think they only lost uh, eight men. The French pile up that bridge uh, with the French Foreign Legion but uh, their tank's been recalled, it's fallen back. They don't want to dare lose that Firestorm unit uh, as the mortars now switch onto the open. The machine guns start opening up on the poles uh, and, and the French, basically, legionnaires move very quickly or as quickly as they can towards the, uh, the village. But the Germans had spent hours preparing before the game, looking at every avenue. It was brilliantly uh, forecast by the German commander and he knew exactly what to do as the Poles launched assault after assault into the front. But they were rushing over the open. They hadn't concentrated with the uh, French and the losses started to mount horrendously. The, the Polish medic, my God, what a hero today. He saved three or four bases. Uh, it, was, it was fantastic. The French uh, legionnaires are determined though, and they still, they're confident vets, but the, the conditions begin to worsen. It's looking very, very bleak. Uh, but the French decide they're gonna go straight forward. They've got that tank in support. They go for the Café Coco. They rush in there. Uh, but the Germans have been waiting. They only had rifle armed troops as a sort of uh, bayonet uh, counter-attacking squad uh, and there were only some uh, a limited amount of basically first platoon but with the supporting fire uh, they knocked out a, a couple of infantry and then closed into hand-to-hand -hand fighting and in fact the, uh, the, the foreign legionaries seemed to have been trapped in and amongst that snow and poor conditions uh, and were basically uh, destroyed including their one IC whilst the poles uh, are just caught like rabbits in a headlight uh, as the weather improves and suddenly visibility is up to 36. In fact, the whole two Polish companies are effectively wiped out. Um, we've got smoke now trying to cover what is ultimately a, a bit of a disaster and, and the Poles are compelled to withdraw the casualties all over the place from the Allied forces was horrendous. The German positioning of their fire teams, their heavy machine guns was maximized. They had nothing to really stop the tanks and it was exceptionally unlucky. But saying that, you cannot take away from how the Germans deployed and fought in this game. There was so much going on, but it was an absolutely magnificent battle. And it saved the Germans bacon, because had this position fallen, the door was open to Narvik, the Falschermjäger could have landed, and it could have been an unmitigated disaster. So destroying those tanks, the double ones, what a disaster but it was a magnificent German victory and German high command couldn't believe it, nor in fact could the Germans, they kept looking, we should have been smashed, they were saying, but with the Polish prisoners lined up uh, in the buildings, they looked very disheartened. And meanwhile, of course, Major MacDonald, who was egging them on from eight, uh, at least 12 miles away in a mountain, as you can see from the picture here, uh, he was going nowhere near that fight, I can tell you. And the Germans have actually captured a tank. They've renamed it, uh, because it's the Navy after Blucher. We've got the Fallschirmjäger now secure in landing, uh, really at the, uh, the airfield at Narvik. Or they can now drop in, uh, potentially, somewhere around uh, the, the battlefield. And we've got another battle coming up with the Gebegsjäger against the Norwegians. Uh, so could those powers be dropped in in an offensive operation? I don't know. But, whew, what a game. Uh, unbelievable, incredible losses and damage to the Polish company and marginal to the Kriegsmarine. So, you know, we've got Blitzkrieg coming up, 
uh, stay tuned for more from Norway. And we've slightly turned the history here. Unsurprising, maybe, because the Germans have fought this campaign so very, very well. But um, for the Allies, lessons to learn. And, and I am assured they have learned them. So stay tuned. More from Norway coming up. And uh, that was fantastic. And I wish you guys had been here to see it. Thanks for your support and uh, please share us about as we want to get this sort of historical message out there and uh, it's over and out for me.